Gradually, the sense of hope that just, you know, flames back um, is, is just, you know, on the counterpoint. Uh, it's wonderful to see that. And as I said before, if you know the stories of what happened to our children, you realize how truly strong they are. Reinhardt is National Director of Honduras and also serves as Director of Family Services for all homes. Being involved in different countries has been a, a great a uh, blessing because in so many countries the, the children are even poorer than they are here in Mexico. And so we've been going to one country to the other and setting up a foundation, doing our building, gathering the children, and uh, it's been very successful. In 1988, Father Wasson and Father Rick founded Nos Petits Frères et Sœurs, our little brothers and sisters in Haiti, the most impoverished country in the Western Hemisphere. Today, approximately 500 children are being raised and educated at the Santa Helene home. In addition to 1,500 children receiving care annually at our 100-bed Hôpital Saint Damien, over 20,000 children are also treated in our outpatient clinic. Father Rick's love and dedication to sick and dying children motivated him to attend medical school. And in addition to his current responsibilities, he is also focused on completing the new hospital. For Father Wasson, the future is here. His determination to have his children continue his vision has been realized in the past decade. It's always been Father Wasson's vision that our own kids would take over leadership roles both here in Mexico and in the other countries. And if you look at the uh, national directors of the other countries, several of them are former pequeños from Mexico. Besides the national directors, you have several former pequeños, not only from Mexico now, but from Honduras, uh, working in Guatemala, Guatemalans working in, in other parts of Central America. So there is, the, uh, the kids do understand, they've learned the concept of being a, one large family and several of them have taken on responsibility for it. Of the nine NPH homes, Reinhard Kohler and Kieran Rigney are the only national directors who are not pequeños. Although each NPH home is unique and special, they do have a lot in common. They provide love and security, they stress the importance of education, and teach the values of sharing, work, and responsibility. Father Wasson believes education will be the great legacy of NPH. Educating the children to prepare them for the wider world has been a priority from the very beginning. The very beginning we had a, uh, a little chicken coop, well it was about uh, like a small room and I had uh, a good teacher come and volunteer his time and he would uh, put the first grade in the first corner, the second grade in the second corner of the room and third in the third and fourth. So I had four grades and he was able to go from one corner to the next to the next and teach them. From a volunteer teacher and virtually no financial resources, NPH provides primary, secondary, and high school education and vocational training, including ceramics, carpentry, cosmetology, hospitality, tourism, computer sciences, electronics, child care, and animal husbandry. Father Wasson will always open the door whenever possible for his children to continue at university, both in the United States and Mexico. In years past, Father Wasson sent several girls to the United States to be schooled in the Montessori method of teaching. One of these former pequeños, the late Luz Barrera Castro, while teaching at Miocatlan, passed on the vital tool of knowledge to the children. The Montessori method has been adopted in several NPH homes in varying degrees and is being taught by former pequeños. Many dedicated individuals contributed to the cultural development of the children. Helen Stern, an artist and friend of Father Wasson's, taught ceramic painting. Two of her students became master craftsmen who created the Tree of Life tile commemorative in honor of NPH's 40th anniversary. The creative seed was planted in another young pequeño at Acoma. It was not until the first year of secundaria that we had drawing. 
and one of the teachers was a painter and he came around, he said, draw something that you want. And I was drawing a parrot and he came and looked at it and said, oh, you are very good. Would you like to be a professional painter? And I said, yes. I said, oh, okay. He left and kept doing, but that's it. He planted that seed and he didn't think about it. Carlos left NPH to pursue a degree in fine arts in Mexico City. He has become internationally known in the realm of sacred art. His bronze, The Fountain of Hope, was installed in honor of NPH's 50th anniversary and is an artful tribute to Father Wasson and all Pequeños. Sergio Sanchez began teaching dance at Acolmon in 1976 and continued to teach and inspire NPH students who have entertained audiences and raised funds worldwide. Uh, we went to, with uh, Father Wasson uh, to play with uh, Studentina and some of the boys, uh, uh, Danza, uh, Danza is uh, the, the dancers, the dancers. So we played to, uh, for them and they danced uh, with the uh, Studentina. So. Father Wasson knew that learning English would be an important benefit to the pequeños, especially to those who wish to continue their education. We were presented various options to continue our studies. For example, there was a, uh, we could come to Cuernavaca to study uh, the high school. We could go to Mexico City to study uh, high school. Or we could go to Yarnell, Arizona to study English. Father Watson decided to have an institution of his own. And he happened to own some land up in Yarnell and so he uh, the company I was with, Canal Homes, um, donated some model homes that were remo were movable on, from the site they were, and and we got through with them. Why the company donated them to Father Wasson, and he took them up to Yarnell, and they made a school up there and dormitories, and it was a great program. The, the children were taught English. And this again was some of the older children. I'd say it started probably about 16, and uh, went up to 20. And uh, they were not just to learn English, but they were taught a lot of different things. All of the pequeños who complete high school and university now give two years of service back to their brothers and sisters. Ryan Highland, a previous volunteer who is information officer for NPH International, knows the importance of education. Because with education, we all know that. This is, that is their opportunity. That is their opportunity to get them out of, out of poverty, to help them realize that they truly are successful people and can be and can do anything they want to do in their lives. Education is so important because that's a way to break this, this cycle of poverty, you know. So that's why we emphasize very much on education. My hope for my children is that they become well-educated and also that they follow our Lord in their lives and with their families. And I think that that's been very true and it's happened. This hope of Father Wasson's is evident in the pequeños at Miacatlan, who chose to give up some of their food and privileges to help children living nearby at the garbage dump of Milpias receive an education. The children come to Miacatlan.